Hello and welcome to this short psychology topic video, this one looking at the statistical tests and the decision tree. Um, as always, all of the resources from this webinar will be made available on our website. Uh, so if you go to tutortu.net, uh, follow the series that's called CPD Webinar Recordings and you'll find all of the resources plus the video and PowerPoint for this particular session uh, as downloadable links from there. Now there's two things I'd like to look at in this particular webinar. Uh, the first one is looking at the importance of inferential statistical tests and the different types of questions that students can be asked in the exam. Um, and then the second thing is looking at practical ways to use the decision tree uh, in, your, in your everyday teaching. And now unusually I want to swap those around and actually look at the practical teaching ideas and strategies first because I think that those underpin then the types of exam questions that come up. So we'll look at the teaching strategies to begin with uh, followed by the types of exam questions that can appear. Just as a quick reminder, we've created these A2 uh, decision tree posters that you can order for free of charge uh, from the TutorTube website. Uh, so if you go onto the TutorTube store, you'll be able to uh, get those sent directly to your school. And I believe you can order three copies for your different classrooms of those. What I've also done is created an A4 black and white version that you might want to print off for your students to put in the sort of front of their folders, uh, because this is definitely a sort of resource that you want all of your students to have access to all of the time. Uh, so I want to start by exploring four different activities and the first activity is called sorting the decision tree. Uh, really, really simple activity and the aim of this particular activity is just to help your students remember the layout and the structure of the decision tree. And it's really simple. What I've done is created a sort of very basic series of prompts uh, and cards that students can cut out. And then the idea is what you want your students to do is to organise those correctly into the layout that determines the, uh, the decision tree. As you'll see that being animated on screen now. Feel free to download and use that slide in your lessons if you want to use it to run through the answers as well. Uh, so that's just a nice sort of starting point or activity really just to make sure your students are familiar with the layout. Uh, you could even do that as an A3 group activity or an independent activity in A4 where they cut it out and stick it into their notebooks, into their, their folders or whatever the case may be. But as I say, just useful to consolidate their knowledge of what the tree actually looks like. Moving on to activity two, and this is where the, the sort of the important activities really fit in okay the second activity is called 3d decision uh, and this really underpins the rest of the activities uh, and the aim of this resource is really to help your students select an appropriate test and in particular justify their choice of test which is what's often asked in the exam okay now with this particular resource you'll get six different research statements and with all of those the idea is that the students have to select what test they're going to use to analyse the data and then justify their test using the 3D method. And if you've not come across the 3D method before, the idea is that they have to justify saying was it a test of the difference or correlation? So your first D is difference. What design has been used? Was it independent measures? Was it repeated measures or was it matched pairs? And then finally, what level of data was used? Was it nominal, ordinal or interval? Uh, so by using those three Ds, they can get themselves four out of four marks, assuming they get the correct test. So if we look at one of those tests together, the first one says researchers are looking at whether being a football player, yes or no, so we've got two groups, makes you less stressed as measured by cortisol levels in saliva. All the assumptions of the parametric test are fulfilled. So straight away, if we think about the decision, the decision tree, we can say, can we use a parametric test? Yes. Is it correlational? Well, in this case, I'm going to say no, because actually we've got two different groups. We've got football players and non-football players. Okay. Uh, was it an independent measures design? I'm going to argue that it was yes, because we've got our two different groups, which leads us to the answer that in this particular case, we could say it's a, an unrelated t-test. If we then think about the three Ds, so our difference, our design and our data, in terms of the answer, we get one mark for saying it's an unrelated t-test. We then get a mark for saying, well, it's because it's a test of the difference. It's not correlational. We get a mark for saying it's because we've used an independent measures design. And then last but not least, we get a mark for saying it's an interval level of data because remember, for the parametric test, it has to be at least an interval level of measurement. Okay, And you can see there that the trees enable the students to get four out of four because if we use the tree, it gives us the answer to each of those different three Ds that we're trying to answer. Okay. Now, what you might find is that students might come up with a different answer to that particular question. They might say it's Pearson's R because we're looking at a correlation between football players and their level of stress. It would potentially be possible to do two Pearson R's in this case. And as long as they justify it correctly, in this particular case, as it's a made up scenario, it's the justification that we're after. Okay. 
The third activity, uh, which I've called Temple Run, uh, probably shouldn't use that name, but I have, um, is really just to sort of give a little bit of variation to your lessons, uh, test and the knowledge and understanding of the different tests, uh, and really just have a bit of fun with them. And the way this particular task works is there are eight different question cards, and you will need one set of these question cards, all eight of them, for the numbers of groups that you're going to use. For an activity like this, I, I personally recommend groups of three to four. Okay, So if you're getting your students working in groups of four, and let's say you've got four or five groups, you're going to need four or five sets of those cards printed out for your lesson. Okay, Now the way it works is that you give every group of students question one face down to begin with. Okay, Then when you say go, the idea is that they spin the card over, and in their group they have to outline what test is going to be used and justify their decision, hopefully using the 3D method. Okay, So they might, in the, this particular case, they might write on the back, Man Whitney, test of difference, independent groups design, ordinal level of data. The idea is that one of the players in each uh, particular group will be assigned the role of runner. And once they're happy that they've got the correct answer and justified it, the runner will bring that card to the front where you'll be seated. And if they're correct, you're going to give them then the second question for them to run back to their desk and, and repeat the process. Now, really clearly, the, the winning table is the table that answers all eight correctly uh, the quickest. It gets really competitive, really lovely, lively activity, and just a bit of fun just to break up something like inferential tests, which doesn't always lend itself to being the most exciting of topics. Finally, as anyone will probably uh, say to you, in terms of getting your students to remember the inferential stats tests, one of the most important things is to get them to practice, practice, practice with something like this. So what I've done for you is I've also created 10 different handouts that you can use. Each of the handouts is structured in exactly the same way. So at the top of the handout, you've got the decision tree in black and white. You've then got in bold italics underneath uh, a research scenario. And for each of those scenarios, the student has to justify um, and select an appropriate statistical test. Uh, the idea is that you could use these as homework activities if you wanted to, starter activities, plenary activities, but you've got 10 different activities there, uh, which I would sort of introduce one a lesson as you're teaching research methods, just to make them continually practice these skills because it is an important skill and it really just comes down to practicing and good habits with these. So there we have it, you've got four different activities that you can use, some really active ones, some sort of more uh, consolidation style activities that will hopefully give you a nice basis uh, for teaching uh, inferential stats and using the decision tree in lessons. So now to work backwards and highlight the importance of the different uh, of the decision tree and inferential stats. Um, I would argue that there's three different types of key questions that can be asked. Okay, uh, The first is what I'm going to call the select and justify an appropriate test. And this is probably the hardest of the questions where the students have to work out what test is being used and say why. Uh, the second type of test is just where, or second type of question I should say, is just where they have to justify a predetermined test. And last but not least, there's the questions that can arise in the optional topics as well. So these types of questions won't just appear in the research method section. They can also appear in relationships, gender, eating and all of the other topics. And students need to be prepared for that as well. Now, if we look at the sample assessment material, what's interesting to note straight away is that AQA have actually put uh, an inferential stats question in all three of the paper two sample assessment materials okay so the three different sets there are uh, each one of them includes an inferential stats question okay um, that highlights straight away because it's a 48 mark section this year research methods that there's a good chance your students are going to have to answer at least one question if not more that requires knowledge of inferential stats test testing okay You'll notice in the last sample assessment material, set three, there's actually two questions. There's a three mark justify question, as well as a 12 mark design your own study question that students need to be able to use the decision tree for. Okay, So quite a lot of marks available for that. Let's take a look at a couple of those questions, just to again put the decision tree into context. Um, so in the sample assessment material, set one, there's a question where it presents the students with a table of data, okay, and the question that goes with it says name an appropriate statistical test that could be used to analyse the number of verbal errors in Table 1. Explain why the test you have chosen would be suitable in this particular case and it's worth four marks, which is typically the highest mark question you'll see for inferential stats. If we use the decision tree, uh, there are two possible answers to this question and we'll discuss that in a moment. If we assume that we could use a parametric test here, uh, and say yes, we're going to say, well, actually, it's not correlational, this particular experiment, because it's looking at number of verbal errors um, in this particular case. And we had two groups when we looked at the table. 
uh, so it's not correlational. Uh, was there an independent measures groups design used? Yes, there was in this particular scenario, which then gives us the unrelated t-test. Okay, if we think about those three Ds. To get the four marks, very simply, we could say that the test used would be an unrelated t-test. The reason being is because it's a test of the difference, it's an independent measures design, and it's an interval level of data. Okay, That's if we've gone down the parametric route. What's quite fortunate is that students might think, actually, we can't use a parametric test here because verbal errors isn't an interval level of measurement. Okay, And they would be perfectly justified to actually also argue that a man Whitney could be used as well. And as long as they justify their decision by saying, well, it's a man-Whitney test because it's a test of the difference, independent measures design, but in this case it would be at an ordinal level of measurement, not an interval, then they would get their four marks as well. Okay, So you can see the importance of the decision tree is actually more around the justification of the tests uh, than just the selecting them. There's a lot of marks for the justification three in this particular case. Okay, So that's the first type of question, so the, the select and justify. The second type of question that can come up is where the question actually tells them what test is going to be used. So you'll see question 14 in the set 2 of the sample assessment materials it says the researcher decided to analyse the data using a Spearman's row. And then the question that goes with that says explain why this is a suitable choice of test for three marks. Okay, Because they've already got the, the, uh, the test in this case, so the three marks are just for the justification this time around. Now, what I like about the decision tree is that it also enables you to work backwards. So if we know we've got Spearman's row, which I've highlighted on screen, we therefore know it's a correlational set of data. We know, therefore, it's not nominal data that's been used, and we know it's a non-parametric test that's being used in this particular case, which then allows us to justify our test by saying, well, actually, in this case, it's correlational. Uh, the data in this particular case would be uh, ordinal set of data. Okay, and it's the Spearman's row that's been used. So you can see you can use the test to work backwards. Um, and in this particular case, I believe it was a match to pairs design that was used in that particular scenario. So there you have it. Those are the two common types of questions. The third uh, set type of question, and the one that we shouldn't ignore, is what I'm going to call the extended response research methods questions. And these are questions where students have to design their own experiment. Okay, uh, You'll see question 26 of the sample assessment material set 3 asks the students to design an experiment to investigate the effect of indoor plants on mood for office workers. Uh, and it says, for your measure of mood, you should devise a measure that would give you datable suitor, suitable for testing at an ordinal level of measurement. Now, these questions are broken down into bullet points to tell the students what they need to do. So for this particular 12 mark, they need to mention their design, including what experimental design they will use, variables and controls. They need to talk about the materials they would use. But most importantly for this particular webinar, they'll also need to talk about the data analysis that they could use, including reference to descriptive and inferential analysis. Okay. Now, I'm just going to show you the three points from the mark scheme. To get their three marks, essentially, for the inferential stats part, they would need to again mention that it's a test of the difference, the data is ordinal, and therefore, depending upon how they've designed their experiment, uh, if they've used independent measures, they'll go down the Mann-Whitney route. If they've used repeated measures, it will be a Wilcoxon test. You can see straight away that that question, despite the fact it's an extended response question, requ uh, requires a really clear knowledge of the decision tree still. So the students definitely need to know the decision tree in order to answer one of those extended response questions, should the question ask them to look at the data. Okay. Last but not least, as I mentioned, inferential stats doesn't only appear in the uh, in the research method topics and if we look at the sample assessment materials for paper three uh, what AQA have done is included inferential stats questions in one of the option blocks so the option block that contains gender cognition and relationships and I've highlighted the questions on the screen there also contains a question that asks the students to uh, state of test that's used and justify the decision which shows us that actually these questions can appear almost anywhere I wouldn't be surprised also if AQA could put it in the year one taught topics, so social memory attachment and so forth as well, uh, because there's no reason why the question couldn't appear in those option blocks as well. So just be aware that students not only need to be able to answer this question in the context of research methods, they should be fully prepared for the questions also appearing within their optional topics. So there we have it. That's why I think that the inferential stats is such an important area because it can it can appear almost anywhere. And there's those two key types of questions, selecting and justifying and justifying a predetermined test, all of which can be answered if we use that decision tree. 
And there we have it. All of the resources uh, will be posted straight away in our Facebook groups uh, and uploaded to our CPD webinar recordings page uh, on our website. Of course, if you have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to contact us either via social media or drop me an email directly. And there we have it. We've covered that in exactly 15 minutes. So I hope you found those activities and ideas helpful. And if you've got any questions, do get in touch. Thanks very much.